So as you can see, today we're going to be taking a look at the new wireless gaming headsets from RIG, being the RIG 600 Pro HS and then the RIG 900 Max HX. But before we dive into the headsets, I want to ask you all an honest question. How many is know about RIG gaming headsets? If you swing back a few years, they were actually Plantronics, and then Nacon, if I'm saying that right, bought them out. And if I'm not mistaken, Nacon is a gaming company they make like rally games and such i'm not sure of anything else they make but again now they're just kind of in the back end but weirdly enough one of my first videos i think it's still on my channel way back in the days don't go look at it those are bad videos but again i loved the headset back then it started my craze and my love for stinking cozy gaming headsets so today we're gonna see is rig still making good gaming headsets. So let's go and kick it off here with the comfort and build of these headsets. Again, over here we have the 900s, over here we have the 600s. You can always tell the difference whenever we're going through it as far as this floating headband design. But where I wanna kick it off with is the weight of these. Let's make sure our scale is fired up. Let's go and put our 900s on there. We are getting 288 grams. Pop those off. Let's get the 600s on we are getting 240 grams. Well, wait, where does it wanna go? 240, 238, okay, 244 is where we're gonna stay. Now, getting them in the hand, uh, yeah, you can tell the 600s are a little bit lighter, but it's not like a drastic amount. It's not like, oh, geez, these are so heavy, considering they got that metal reinforced headband there. They are both incredibly lightweight. Now, something different, other than weight even, are the ear pads just looking straight down like this you can probably see you see these are cloth on the outside these are the pleather now when you look on the inside you do have that cloth and then on the inside it's pleather as well it's going to play into our sound now coming over here cloth all the way around inside and out so one other thing before we dive any further the measurements the pads on the 900s they are a bit bigger as you're looking at the dimensions right here you can see your depth these pads are just clear as day, a bit bigger. Looking at the ones on the 600 here, bam, and then the depth. So again, they're almost like, you know, the ear pads, I wish they would have kept these and put them on these over here. It's not even so much that these are just bigger, it's that these give way a little bit more on the 600, give way a little bit quicker. But again, that will play into sound with these being locked in pleather these being fully cloth, but these are also more breathable. Now, one of the biggest differences, again, that you're gonna see in these headsets is that floating headband design. Over here, you have this really nice plush headband, same as the pads over here, and it goes all the way across the entire headband. Over here, you have the floating headband design. It just kind of stretches out. Old classic steel series, you kind of see, but this has a little bit more tension on it. Now, when you take both of these headsets, I'm gonna put them on right here. Again, they, they just sit on there, but, but but there is one flaw I'm gonna get to, and that goes with both of them. Let's go on and flip this around and get the 600s on. You know, the 600s have a slightly firmer clamping force. I'm gonna put this just a little bit above medium clamping force for me, at least, wearing glasses. And then again, going back to the 900s here, I'm gonna put this right at a light. So, so this is right on the line of medium, uh firm stretching it is put into firm but it's more towards the medium this is more towards the light at least for my head shape and again with an ear glasses wear but the biggest thing about comfort on both of these headsets or just about all the rigs headsets is they have no swivel i mean they budge just a pinch like that but it is not enough now your ear pads will go in and out and there's plenty of stretch and plenty of give within both of these headsets but again, you have no swivel. So when I take this and put it on, I get that HyperX cloud effect, right? Right back here, I feel that gap. I clear as they have that gap back there. So that's going to have that sound bleed, some of that sound coming in. And most importantly, that pressure up front here. That also goes into play with the 900s. But on the 900s, it's a little bit more forgiven because we have those bigger pads. But I still have that same effect right there. And I think that's an easy fix for rig if they just give a little bit more slack right there in that ear pad or that cup. Now I wanna roll right into build here as we're talking about comfort because a lot of everything I'm mentioning goes into play with this. So on rig headsets, they well, they haven't changed since they were with Plantronics. They've been the same here, which is honestly kind of boring, right? Anyways, 
So we all know uh, the rig headsets, they pop off right here. And that is how you can also adjust them. You got that small, medium, and large. Again, same over here on say the 600s, even down to the lower end budget wired headsets. This is how you adjust them right there. And again, how they can improve that swivel, I think is give it a little bit more adjustability or something in there. I'm not too sure would it just be rattly. They got these uh, foam dampeners right here, as you can see in that connection point. So I think if they put some on either side right there, it would implement that swivel and that would make them stink and cozy. But right now, as it sits, whoo, it is close. But no, I cannot say stink and cozy, at least for my head shape where it dips in a little bit back there. I hate having that gap and I hate no swivel. You all know that. But sticking with build and sticking with these detachable ear cups right here with those notches, as you see, they're just hanging by the wires there. That makes me so nervous since day one with rig gaming headsets. I mean, I mean, these are a little bit heavy. Like this got the you know microphone attached and all the other components in there. Now when we come over to the lower end one, the 600s, they are a little bit lighter here and it's just, still worrisome though. It's just like, okay, if you're adjusting it, you're pulling that off and you're giving a little bit of strength and you yank it, are you gonna yank that wire loose, right? It's only so tight that it can be in there. I'm not gonna break mine, but like, I mean, come on, that is nerve wracking. But now as far as like durability, once you actually have your ear cups in there, I, I think we're perfectly fine. Cause you see, that's really cool. As I twisted it, you just saw that ear cup pop out there and I'm twisting it pretty uh, viciously, right? I don't expect anyone to be doing that. You all know I do that. Cause I'd rather break my product than you break your product, find out where that weak point is. So again, I, I like that. Again, you twist it up, you see, bam, you twist it. And then bam, that ear, pup, ear cup can just pop off like that if it comes to that extreme stress point. So I do like that, but then you also have that wire that we spoke about. So it's kind of like, ah, it's so-so. I like the build, I really do. It plays into the lightweight and everything like that. The, the, the ear cup popping off is really cool, but then you got that wires right there. So I don't know, I gotta kind of leave this as iffy. Now kind of right in line with build or maybe styling. I'm not sure where you really want to place this. Again, the styling's kind of the exact same as they've been since Plantronics owned them. You know, again, in line with the build, rig headsets, even when I think about it from back in day one, and then now what you see, they just Again, they got a cheap vibe to them. I'm not saying that they are cheap, because again, I've stated many times, I'll take an all plastic headset over a full metal one that's incredibly heavy, so I'll take that. But like you got these ridges here and everything, it's just, it feels like cheap plastic. You know what I mean? Does that make a difference if you got more rigid? I don't know, take care of it. I don't think it's gonna break if you just toss it, but I always get that kind of, really cheap vibe with rig headsets. I just wish they would update the styling or maybe the materials on it, give it a little more rigid kind of modern feel like, yo, they just need a refresh. So now let's go ahead and talk features and functions on both of the headsets. Again, on the left, we have the 900s, over here we have the 600s, and then we have my phone, which we're gonna talk about. Now, when you look at the back of these headsets, you got a lot of the same features and functions. You got Bluetooth, which no, it's not simultaneous. It's one or the other where you double press it. Over here, you got your multi-function button. Over here, you got your volume wheel. Now, now these are different. You can see you got this rubber one on the 900, a little bit bigger. Over here, you got this small one. Um, You know, I honestly say the smaller one's the plus because it's less likely to hit on a couch or a chair if you're leaning back. You got this big one here, but both of them are in there nice and firm. So I don't know, maybe nitpicky, but I do like the smaller one better. Down here, you have the power button. Right below it, you have your USB-C charging port. And then as far as the microphone, as you see over here on the 600s, it's built into it, kind of camouflaged actually. You press it right down yonder, bam, and it's gonna come out. Now there is no tilt within it. So it's just gonna be right in that position, which we'll get that microphone test here shortly. Over here on the 900s, bam, slides down, and then you can mold it a little bit right there. Now the weird thing about this, as you slide it up and down, I'm gonna let you listen. There is no clicky tactile notification in there. And that can really, 
I don't know, drive me nuts. Because if I got it just right here, I'm like, oh shoot, am I muted or not, you know? So a tactile bump would be very nice in this headset. Now I want to talk about the most important aspect of features and functions of both of these headsets here, and that is actually using them. And kicking it off first with the battery, over here on the 600s, you get 24 hours on Bluetooth and up to 18 hours running wireless. Over here on the 900s, you get 50 hours wireless and then up to 60 hours Bluetooth. So a pretty substantial difference as far as battery life, but of course just charge your stuff and I think 18 hours is plenty fine for anybody. But other than the battery life right here, talking about what we're getting, right? So over here on the 600C, you got this USB-C dongle right up there. And, and I really like how they did this. Uh, I think it's SteelSeries that did this before where they got the C port over here and it's to the angle. So if you're on your PlayStation, bam, you plug it in, you still can take access uh, to the USB-A or if you flip it over, I forget which way it is. Also on your Nintendo Switch, bam, you can just plug it in right down there. So I really like that. Again, how it is C, you get the adapter in the box as well. Now coming over here to the 900s, a little bit different. And when you look at this, you might be thinking, uh, Astros. Well, at least that's what I thought, right? When I first saw this, I said, wow, very Astro-like, right? Unfortunately, it's really not. So what this is, you can see you got those little um, ports right down there. Here in the middle, you see rig, which you can pop out. And that is your USB dongle. Now, this one being the Xbox version, as you see, you can switch it over from a controller and then to PC, right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, PC and then a controller there. So you can use this on Xbox, PC, your Mac, um, your Switch, and then also your Xbox and PS5, if I said that yet. So really cool. You can use this across every single platform. Now, the weird thing here, you might be thinking, at least what I did, is like, cool, I can use that somewhere, then have this plugged in somewhere. I got multiple sources. Well, no, not really. What this is, is just a charging dock. That is what this is. When you set it in there, bam, gets into those little deals, little magnetic uh, hold spot. So it gets in there and it charges great. You got a little LED light up here that gives you the status. But if you want that source to come through this, yes, this USB does have to be in there. So I guess cool that, yeah, you can have this in your PC and this uh, across the room over by your console and then just charge it there to clear up clutter. But what I personally would have thought would have been kind of game changing and really cool to kind of separate it and justify the price, which we'll talk about at the end, is this being a receiver and that being a receiver and you can use one or the other and kind of switch it on the back right there. But this is just a charging base. That is your receiver. I mean, I was so excited when I first saw this. Again, I was getting Astro vibes. I'm like, all right, well, Astro's not going to do anything. So Rig's stepping it up and they're going to do something cool like that here. And unfortunately, they just didn't. They kind of went three steps back from even as basic as the Astros are because you can switch it on the back of the Astros right there. So again, I don't know. I think it's a complete missed opportunity right here on Riggs Park. Now, one thing that I don't think is a missed part and something I really love about these headsets is the app controls for it. Simplistic, basic, easy to use, right to the point. Now, the app for the 900s was not out during my test, but I just checked right now before I start a film and it is out. And it's the exact same as this right here. So, so again, you're going to get this function over here, which I really like. And, and right at the main screen, you can kind of see you got your battery status, you got your firmware updates, customization, and then your settings. And you got multiple profiles up here that you can just click. And again, this is syncing through the Bluetooth of these headsets. So you got to have your Bluetooth paired to your phone and any adjustment you're doing is going to happen on the fly. And again, you got multiple profiles. So number one, just looking at it right here, customization. We're gonna pop into there. You got your microphone gain, low, mid, high. Microphone monitoring, which is how much, of course, you're gonna hear coming in right there. Volume level protection, if you don't want it blasting on you. And then as far as your sound. Now you can come down here to equalizer, kind of create your own, really simple. You got your bass, your mids, and your treble really like this i kind of get my uh smiley curve right there you got some presets in there and then of course your custom now where it's going to get a little different is this button up top here where it says expert mode let's go on and tap that and look at this you get all of those bands in there to really really tweak it now in my experience with this uh, once we're going to talk about sound here tweaking each little one here i didn't get really a noticeable change compared to whenever I was in just the basic mode right here. 
honestly, this came out to the sound I wanted, even when I came over here and just kind of tweaked this a little bit, you know, and it steps in the, it adjusts in the steps right there. So again, and then you come over here into the uh, additional, which is kind of this button back here whenever you double press it, the Bluetooth button where you got dual mode, game mode, and then Bluetooth. Dual mode will just sync to, again, if, if you get a call or something like that, it'll come through. Game mode is just strictly game mode. Bluetooth is just strictly uh, Bluetooth right there. And then, of course, voice prompts. But anyways, again, back to the equalizer mode. I really, if you have this headset, either one, I recommend you use just the basic one. It's simple, and you're going to get those uh, changes within the sound that you like. And this was a pretty fun sound here across Diablo, Destiny, Call of Duty, stuff like that. That's, that's a sound profile I really like. But again, it's super easy to tweak and adjust. And that's kind of at the core what this app and headset is. It's just super stinking easy, right? And I love the implementation of this app for this headset. Now let's go and get the mic test of these new rig gaming headsets. And what you're hearing first here are the Pro HS, the 600 Pro HS microphone. As you see, this is the one that flips down. Um, when you flip it up, you get a tone. When it mutes, it's like a deeper tone. When you flip it down, you get a higher pitch tone to let you know it is muted. And I do like how it kind of goes and just goes flush into the headset. I'll show you here real quick. This then you got this little ledge on the bottom where you kind of push your thumb and then pull it on down. And then you get a higher pitch sound whenever it goes active. I don't know if I stated that wrong. But all in all, this is the microphone here. One thing I did notice on one test I did is it sounds very, uh, would I say, airy or open, a uh, little bit of echo. That is because mainly, well, I don't have any sound dampening in my room. You all know I like keeping it a raw environment for my testing because I don't think many people are going to have some crazy studio with all these, you know, sound dampening panels on the wall. So I decided to leave mine off. My door is open. My AC is on. And I got two dogs out there chewing on some fresh new bones. I got them, right? So uh, uh, ve vegan bones, not, not, not animal bones, by the way. But anyways, they're chomping on those. And that is the result we're getting of this microphone. But again, the microphone's over here. I'm talking forward. So you got that combination of everything. That's the reason you're going to kind of get that echo of this microphone. I wish you were able to tilt it a little bit more. In front of you. Now we're going to go ahead and get the microphone test of the 900 Max HX, but I wanted to show you it on the stand here. You can see the light is red, it is charging, and it's not synced up. But what I can do is pop it off. I don't know if the microphone will pick it, but it says searching for USB or USB found and then searching for Bluetooth. And right here, it just all paired up. Let's make sure it is on for our microphone as well. Volume is set. Let me drop it right there. So it's set the exact same volume we did over there. I don't do any uh, sound tweaking or morphing of anything whenever I do my microphone test. So let's get this. Let's get that. Let's record. And now we are hearing the microphone on the 900HX rig headset here. It looks like it's picking up a little bit lower. Is the microphone? Let me try to tilt this a little bit in towards me I, I don't know it's ye it's not super moldable but i got it a little bit better it's still far away but it's not pointing straight out kind of like we saw in the 600s there and so i am picking up a little bit more straight out the box it is going to be straight like that and this one again it is flip up you get the same tone you get the like, deeper tone when you flip it up and then a the, uh, lower tone or the higher pitch tone whenever you tilt it down but there's no click notification in there something which kind of i don't know uh, something i would like so i know okay hey i hit that point right there but again both of these microphones i kind of wish they were a little bit more directly in front of your face so you're not getting that reverberation and that echo um, from your game room and stuff um, one other thing i wanted to test here real quick and i'm sure it's going to be the exact same on both of them but we'll just do it on this one since uh, we already did that microphone test I'm gonna set this headset down and I'm just gonna walk out of the room and I want to do um, like some chatter just to see so if you got a noisy environment you got kids playing or people over whatever talking in another room I want to see how much the microphone will still pick up so anyways I'm going to set the headset down it's just sitting right there I'm gonna walk out and I'll be right back so now I'm on the side of the camera I'm now behind the camera, behind the camera, actually right behind the headset, sitting in front. Now I am right about to exit the room. I have left the room. I have left the room and I'm going to exit. Okay, I, I am a little bit behind. I'm going to exit the room. Okay, there is some of the sound testing. I'm going to come back into the room just to, again, 
and see what kind of chatter this microphone will pick up if you got a noisy environment going on in there uh, throughout your house. Now, one other thing I wanted to uh, point out as well, hopefully you guys still hear me with this microphone, if you wear a hat when you're gaming, I mean, a lot of people question me, like, hey, well, you wear a hat when you game. Well, I don't wear a hat when I game. Uh, I will let you know, especially over here on the 600s and even over here on the 900s, it's uncomfortable with the hat because, again, it's barely fitting around you right there. But other than that, that's just a little nitpick I wanted to point out there. As far as the microphones, these are them. We'll be able to pick them apart, uh, listen to them together. I don't tweak anything or adjust anything. I re plug play, record, and then put it into my timeline for the edit. But that out of the room, I really wanted to pick that up because you all know you got those buddies on and you got all that, their family chatter. Like you don't want to, you don't want to hear about the homework your uh, brother or sister has to do when you're trying to play your game. You know what I mean? So that's why I've been doing that test lately and I hope that one does help you out. But all in all, that's the microphone test. All right, so now let's go on and get into one of my favorite parts, talking about sound. You all know I get incredibly long-winded here, and I don't sit here and just yak about numbers. I like to talk about my actual experience with them, testing many headsets in games. I want to give you a true gamer's experience feedback, raw, right? So... If you're interested in the basic specs of them, both of them are using 40 millimeter drivers with a frequency range of 20 to 20,000, kind of like the standard gamer headset type thing, right? Now, there are some different things packed into these headsets, which I'm not going to talk about in this sound segment, which is on the 900s. They have the Dolby Atmos little personalization where you scan your face and your ears. We've seen this across many headsets before. Some of them, a lot of earbuds, they do just your ears. Uh, a lot of headphones or headsets, they do your entire face and scan it around. I'm not a fan of that. I think it's kind of gimmicky. And again, there's so many variables, like it won't take a good picture of your face or whatever. If you're going to use Atmos, just use Atmos straight up. Don't deal with any of the face scanning stuff. So again, I'm not going to talk about that right here. We're going to talk about the core sound. And you already heard what they're packing. And honestly, at the core, the sound of both of these headsets is pretty darn close. Very, very similar. I think the only thing that's really separating them could be the ear pads, where you're getting a little bit more breathability. You're getting some of that bass kind of breathing out of these fully cloth ear pads. Over here, it's locking it in a little bit. And I want to touch on that. I want to stick on that locking in the sound right there, which is going to be more focused around the bass. Because, yes, these headsets are a little warmer, right? Uh, think... I'm trying to give you a comparison. I, I don't think I would say as warm as like the Black Sharks, as I've mentioned it before. Maybe some older Corsair headsets, I would say. Uh, a little bit warmer than new Steel Series headsets. But they're not bass heavy. They're not thumpy or rumbly. And that can kind of go into the experience of these. Because you have highs. They're not screechy highs. So you're kind of catching me, right? It's like, all right, this is a fairly manageable sound, right? It's not thumpy or bass heavy, but it is warm. It's got highs, but they're not screechy. The mids are somewhere in here doing something, right? I think they're just kind of working with the bass and the highs rather than doing their own thing. And what I got was a good sound in certain situations, right? So if I'm just running through my mission in Destiny, firing it up and everything, ship coming into land, firing my weapon, I'm like, all right, man, I'm getting down with this. I can really enjoy this. I'm immersed. I'm feeling my weapons, the abilities, the dialogue's good. Bam, next thing you know, boss comes out and chaos is on us, right? Whether it be Diablo or in Destiny, you all know, right? And when that chaos started happening with this headset, the chaos was within a game, and it was in the headset. Not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. It was jumbly. It was messy. It never got staticky or overdone like the headset couldn't handle it. It was almost like it just didn't know what to handle, right? So you, you got this bass over here, which isn't punchy, rumbly, or anything like that, but it's more of a Man, I hate audiophile type talk, right? But I'm going to say it's a softer bass, right? It's not that crispy hard bass. It's a softer bass here. Then the highs are still at that same level. And here's the mids. Again, they're not here in the middle helping everything out. They're over here fighting with the, the highs and, again, mixing in with the lows. And in those hectic, messy situations in the game, the headset, I don't feel like it could handle it 
not in a distorted, staticky type of atmosphere or, or feedback, but just sloppy. It, you didn't get that really juicy, immersive feeling when you got into those situations. You kind of got like, ah, man, let me beat these enemies real quick so I can get out of this, right? Because I'm not, I'm not liking what's getting put into my head. That's the vibe I got. And that's kind of what we got with Rig a lot, with a lot of their headsets, you know what I mean? Like, like you're catching me talking here. This is, by the way, even with stock sound or with my custom EQ, whenever I dabbled with it, just so we're aware right there. And yes, I did dabble with Atmos as well, because I wanted to just test it. I don't want that to be a talking point or a selling point, because you all know my take on that, right? But I did dabble with Atmos, and you still get the same, right? It's still going to deliver the same. You're just going to be able to tweak with some of those highs or anything. But in a sticky situation, the headset, what, just sounded sloppy. So I think Rig or Nacon or whatever, they got the base core right here, but they got to... They got to just, I don't know, do something different with the drivers, maybe 50 millimeter drivers or something. I don't know, tune them a little bit different right here. Because again, at the core, you got a good sound. But when you get into these situations, you don't got a good sound. And as far as FPS, no, I wouldn't re recommend them as FPS either. Because you can just take everything I just talked about and think about whenever you're in the middle of that battle. You got a plane going over you. I'm talking Call of Duty or an ability going off. Well, it's going to get jumbled again, and you're going to lose that enemy right there. So, chaos in a story game, mix, mix uh, sounds going on in FPS. So, it's like, man, it's good here, but it falls off at the end. And you know what's funny? Talking about that sound falling off at the end, that kind of wraps up this headset here. Now, don't leave me, because there's something else juicy I want to talk about. But I want to talk about, again, I want to wrap up the headsets here. So this, the 900s are 250 bucks. I'm sorry, like it's straight to the point. There are a lot of headsets out there in that $250 range, $200 range that just top this easy all day long. And I would recommend a way over these, you know. Now coming over here to the 600s at 100 bucks, I do like them. I think the comfort, comfort subjective. So if they're comfortable for you, you'll be fine. But I would say only if you're casually playing some story games. Not if you're trying to get serious into FPS and if, you know, maybe you're not playing a really aggressive kind of really high impact, you know, action packed type of game, you might get down with it. But I don't like saying that. I'm not, I don't like recommending products where I say, oh, it's only if you do this or only if you do that, or only if you do that, you know, and that, these being at a hundred bucks, you know, I'm so close to saying, yeah, I like them. But honestly, me sitting here, I, I can't recommend either of them, and I wouldn't recommend either of them, you know what I mean? It's not saying they're horrible, right? And I'm not trying to back it up or fluff it up by any means. They are not horrible. There's so much potential here. Rig, Nacon, I've only offered my services up to Razer and Steel Series before, a little percentage, right? Hit me up, right? We can talk shop here. I, I mean, you guys got this. You guys have this right here. The potential is sitting there. And you can make a heck of a gaming headset, but right now, you're just not. Now, the one thing that really upsets me right here, when I was kind of digging in and doing my research on these headsets, and you guys can see this yourself, you can go to Nacon's website directly. This is not on Amazon. You all have heard me gripe about my Amazon stuff, but go into Nacon's site directly, buying these headsets, you can go down there and these guys have like five stars across the board, multiple reviews going down there across their products. And if you look underneath them, if you look closely, you're gonna see right below the title that provided free product. Provided a free product, best headset ever. Right underneath it, free product provided. I hate that. I can't stand it. Nowadays, companies have to post that on there. Same with on Amazon, right? The Vine reviews. Like, all you're doing is fluffing it, Nacon, or Rig, whatever. That really upsets me. And I hope you guys change it and fix your website because that is incredibly misleading to consumers. You're fakely advertising it, and it, it just... Ah, man, that really rubs me the wrong way because, again, you all know I am... An employee of you guys, the viewers, the consumer, and that's what I stand by since day one. And seeing something like that directly on a consumer's or a company's website really 
really irks me. Nacon, fix that, then fix your headsets. But there is my review. I, I didn't mean this to be negative. It, it's just passion, right? You know my passion for audio runs deep, right? So don't take this as negative or a bash or something like that. Just trying to make this space better. And all in all, I hope I was able to help you out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.